We've looked at SwiftUI's buttons a little bit previously, but they're remarkably flexible and can adapt to a wide range of use cases. Now, the easiest way to make a button is one we used previously, when it contains just some text as its button on the screen, pass the title to show, and then a closure to run when the button's tapped. For example, we could say uh, button delete selection, and then a closure to run, print now deleting like that. Of course, this can be any function. There's have to be a passed in closure. We could have said something like uh, func execute delete and then print now deleting inside there like that. And rather than passing in this trailing closure, instead say, hey, your action is execute delete. It's exactly the same thing. There are a few different ways of customizing the way buttons look. For example, we could attach a role to a button, which iOS can use to adjust its appearance, both visually and for screen readers. For example, we could say our delete button here has a destructive role. It's going to delete stuff. We'll say role is, uh, sorry, the role is dot destructive, like that. And you see it goes red. Second, we can use one of the built-in button styles, such as bordered and bordered prominent. These can be used by themselves or in combination with roles, it's down to you. Let's make a variety of them here. We'll say uh, button, button, and I'll do no code inside there. I'll copy and paste this a few times, like this. We'll say button four, button three, button two, and then button one, and then place all those inside a V stack. So we have four buttons now. I'm gonna customize them all in slightly different ways. So button one, I'll say, has a button style of dot bordered. Then we have button two. I'll say button two has button style of dot bordered. But I'll say it has also a role of dot destructive. So it'll make it a red bordered button like that. Button three, I'll say, has a button style of bordered prominent. So much more color for it this time. There we go, nice and strong colors. And button four, again, button style dot bordered prominent. But I'll also give it that role again. So role dot destructive. And we'll see a variety of types here. If you want to, you can customize the colors used to make the bordered button. So we have here, our button three, this filled one here, I could have said, be prominent, fine, but then tint with mint. Chosen mostly because it rhymes. And now you get this mint tinted button. It's important I tell you some really key advice from Apple. This border prominent thing is great for making one or maybe two buttons stand out. If you use too many prominent buttons, you've got a problem. Because when everything's trying to be prominent, nothing actually is prominent. It just gets lost in the mess. Now, if you want, you can make completely custom buttons. You could say uh, the button uh, with an action of print button was tapped. And I'll provide a custom label for my button by saying another trailing closure called label. We'll do text uh, tap me with padding and foreground color of white and background color of dot red. So a completely customized look to my button. So a rectangular red thing going on. It is so common when you want to use this with images because Swift UI has a dedicated image type for loading images into your apps. And there are three main ways you'll find yourself making them. One is something like image pencil. That will load an image called pencil from your asset catalog to work with. There's also image decorative pencil, which means still load the same image, but now don't read it out to screen readers. This pencil is just there for decoration, doesn't add any semantic value to the screen. There's also image system name pencil. So I had like here, image system name pencil we're saying please load this picture this pencil picture 
from the iOS built-in asset catalog of images called SF Symbols. Go ahead and search for that on the web. You'll find the SF Symbols app. You can browse through all multiple thousand symbols out there. There are lots and they're all built into iOS and more. Now by default, the screen reader will read out your image name if it's enabled. So make sure you give your images sensible, clear, unoffensive names to avoid confusing the user. Or if they add no sort of value at all, make them decorative. Now because the longer form of buttons can have completely custom labels down here, this is a great place to put images. We could have said print uh, edit button and was tapped. And our label here would be image system name pencil again, like that. Tap the pencil, boom, you're in editing mode. If you want both text and image at the same time, there's a special type for that called label. Label, edit, system image, pencil. Now get the word edit backed up by the pencil icon. On the surface, this sounds and looks just like we use the hashtag rather than the label. However, SwiftUI is really, really smart here because it'll automatically decide, should I use the icon? Should I use the text or both? Depending on the exact context they're being used for in our layout. Exactly how they're being used will dictate what the label chooses to show. This makes label a fantastic choice in many situations as you'll see. Now, one last tip. If along the way you find your images have become filled in with color, if you're placing one as a label for your button, um, you'll see a solid color rather than the sort of nice picture you had before. This is probably, almost certainly, SwiftUI trying to color them to show they're tappable. Because this sort of light blue color means, oh, it's interactive. So it tries to color your picture blue and can really screw things up. To fix the problem, add the modifier rendering mode original next to any image. Any image that attached will automatically show its original graphics, not the blue version. I can't use it here because I'm on a, not in an image, but if you are an image, use rendering mode original and it will force with your to show the original colors from the image rather than the recolored blue version instead.